Have you seen Amy's impression? Hey, you guys, let's go get some water. <laughs> terrible, terrible impression. Terrible. Go get a filthy ham sandwich. I don't even know who. I think she was doing an impression of Tweety Bird. I'm very offended. Hello, I'm Natasha Leone, and today I'll be reviewing impressions of myself. You want an impression? Okay, here's my impression. Zoomy woomy, Google smoogle, cockroach. I have smoked cocaine many times, and nothing huh, has me up more than this, so uh, no, these are not normal uh, cigarettes. They're Israeli laced cigarettes. She did great. I do like that she talks about um, the cigarette being laced with cocaine. It's funny when people do that. You know what I mean? It's a little extra kick. One time that happened to me with PCP. I know you guys are very classy operation over at Vanity Fair. I would say avoid PCP if you can. Well, good, because my poos poos is allergic to latex. And your penis is also allergic uh, to latex. You know, it's interesting when a penis is allergic to latex. And, uh, you know, I'm so moved that Chloe uh, appreciates that uh, nuanced detail uh, like I do. I think the line from the show is, uh, I think I'm asking for a lambskin condom at the deli. And I think I say, because my little lips are allergic to latex. And so I'm glad that that riff that on the day just uh, came up uh, has made it into this impression. I remember being so blown away by Chloe this first time I saw her do this, and uh, I posted it right to Instagram because I'm a modern woman. She's a national treasure, and uh, it's it's very flattering to be honest. It's a uh, it's like receiving a love letter from Beazelbub himself. I'm on this app for clout, aren't we all? I just want a little bit of internet clout. So what, so what, you want an impression? Okay, here's my impression. I mean, is that all, your majesty? You know, do you want a beer? I'll get you a beer. Do you want a cigarette? Hey, I'll get you a cigarette. Well, on second thought, can I have the cigarette? It's been a long, it's been a long life. And don't smoke, kids, <laughs> don't smoke. Well, me, I'm an old lady, I'm from New York. What is it about me? Is it the crazy hair? Maybe. Is it the smoky eye? Makes me look like I'm a raccoon? I know, I look like a raccoon, I know that. She was great, yeah, she was, uh... She was raspy. She also, I think, had a New York accent, which again, uh, I'm not sure where that's coming from. Would you do Joe Pesci with a New York accent? You wouldn't. That would be disrespectful. Seems like a very nice person. Obviously has excellent taste. I think she said that I look like a raccoon. Uh, she's not wrong. I, I, I love a raccoon. If you've ever seen uh, videos on the internet of raccoons eating, sometimes they even do it at little picnic tables. And it's so charming because they chew and they look around. And that's mostly what I'm basing my entire personality on, is a, a chewing raccoon at Tompkins Square Park. I, I do think she called me an old lady, and I am, I'm ancient. You know, the thing about being 3,000 years old is that it ages you. But I would say I don't look a day over one. She had a lot of zingers, I, less so from the actual TV show. That was more of a general a general vibe, I would say. This is my impression of Natasha Leone in corporate America. Hello, cutie patootie. I will have the email for you in a jiffy. Zoomy woomy, Google smoogle, <laughs> Microsoft Teams, Go Gleams. I'm going to type this email faster than a taxi cab heading down Fifth Avenue. Slacky Jackie, you know, Slack is big, right? Yeah, this guy is good at rhyming. Uh, so, you know, a lot of my talk is uh, based on Mashing words, you know, would you put an elephant on a bicycle? That kind of a thing. And you just, words, you just, you grab them from the sky, you string them together, miscellaneous, tangential, boom, sentence. This kind of uh, talky-walky uh, works better in a sort of a rhythm. And I appreciate that this man has found I would say the answer to life's questions. Was that a real business meeting that he was on and how did he do? Uh, there's a funny guy. Uh, I like him. I like him. Way to go, Edson. Ooh, she's taking a nap. Onward Impressions, part three. Cockroach. I like the laziness and the simplicity of this one. I admire that she didn't want to work too hard. And so I like that she began the video napping. A lot of people did not they had more active impressions. It seems like she moves on to other impressions. She didn't know at the time, I think, that the core persona she was touching in that moment was napping. What she does not know is one time I was uh, on stage, uh, off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, Black Box Theater, a little play called uh, Tigers Be Still. In the play, uh, you know, I'd recently been cheated on by my fiance, so I spent it all the night, uh, velour, juicy sweat, uh, uh, sweatsuit, and uh, drinking Jack Daniels. I actually fell asleep during the play. A lot of my character was just 
depressed and uh, napping and I would take full naps during the show. And so I appreciate that she too is a performer knows to, to nap first. What's funny to me about the cockroach of it all is just that is how you say it. So it's weird for me to have to exist in a world that's gone mad and be the only sane one. I'm so grateful for being, uh, you know, temporarily successful and momentarily in the zeitgeist. But uh, a lot of what they don't tell you is there's some of your worst nightmares come true. In my case, uh, my, one of my greatest fears is a cockroach. And here I find myself being chased, chased down by this word. It was just a, a plot point, a joke, a bit. So who knew that, you know, that's, that's the nature of the rhythms of the, the sound of the music of the spheres, I guess. And you know what? I'm grateful. There's bigger problems to be had in this life. So you, you, you eat the fear, but not the cockroach. Do not use Cumex if you have certain medical conditions. Cumex may cause new or worsening urinary retention problems with uh, controlling your body temperature and blurred vision. Call your doctor to find out if Cumex is right for you. I would call her a mumblefish. Uh, so what was interesting about that was two things I was struck with. One, I had no idea what was happening, so three things. Two, you know, a lot of obviously uh, the character of Nadia and Rationale is based on uh, both Elliot Gould and Robert Altman's The Long Goodbye, so a sort of classic Philip Marlowe, and also, a, in general, kind of a, a Peter Falk. And what do both of them do? They like a mumble. Now, I don't realize that naturally, I think I sometimes am doing a mumble. As a child, this is now the third thing, I remember that uh, my mother used to take me to auditions all over this city, the Big Apple, and she would say, enunciate, for Christ's sake, enunciate because she thought I wasn't going to get the jobs. Well, isn't that funny, Mom? Because look what we have here. Mr. Mumblefish in the flesh. A full impression. You can't even understand a word she's saying. But yeah, you know, I guess uh, mumbling pays. That's what I always say. And if for only $4.99 a month, you can come join my mumbling program. Uh, is it a Ponzi scheme? Sure it is. Is it a pyramid scheme? Also, yes. But join me. What else are you doing? Yeah, I guess uh, up and down the scales, uh, yeah, certain, certain words are less relevant. You know what I think it is? It might be the bad influence of Chris Walken over the years. I remember that I once heard that he, in all his scripts, apparently, this might be a rumor, also you know that apparently he used to get blood transfusions. Him and Keith Richards apparently would get full blood transfusions, and that's how they stay looking like little tiny babies. But that's a separate conversation for a different Vanity Fair piece. Uh, so we're gonna stay focused. So I heard that Chris Walken, he apparently crosses out all the punctuation and all the stage direction in scripts when he gets them. And so he walks into a room, I guess, and like, so he kind of is modulating, I guess, on a, Wim, incredibly trained guy, obviously, a song and dance man, a legend, we, we love him. But I wonder if, without realizing it, that's why I'm up and down. And also, Bob Fosse. Something like that, I'm guessing. And of course, the sound of music. Ah, oh, what a poem. It's a play, I think, in a movie. Uh, I would say, other than the cigarettes, the New York accent, the big hair, the eyeliner, and the double-sided coin of the existential dilemma, they have all been on point. I find it very moving, actually, uh, to have lived such a deranged life and find that it's, uh, people think that it's uh, funny is just, it's very, it's very sweet. We did it, honey, thank you so much. Thank you.